Hello, today I'm going to talk about game Snapshot from Game Designers Workshop from 1979. It's uh, another one of GDW's classic games, and they are clearly the pioneer in this area. Cisco's it's a it directly ties into the Travelers universe, or as we'd call it today, the classical Travelers universe. And it's a module that that shows you how to do close combat aboard starships. The box, it's, a, it's one of their small box games like, you know, Asteroid also came in this format. It's six inches by nine inches by an inch and a half. The theme is probably best described by the back cover here. As a free trading ship, Beowulf jumps between the stars. A small band of passengers quietly assemble pistols from parts concealed in their luggage and then make their way stealthily to the crew's quarters and the bridge. As they near the entrance of the control room, an alarm trips and shots ring out. The situation instantly becomes a life and death struggle for the control of the ship. <clears throat> so that gives you a little bit of the flavor. So it's a snapshot. So it's an expansion of the basic personal combat rules of Traveler. Uh, Hence, reach the square grid. And you also can play with a referee. So it's a self-contained module, but you can tie it in with your travel adventures as well. I mean, I like these small boxes they have. It's very, uh, art's very well done and very conveys what's going on there. As far as components, first there's a rule book. Uh, this one's a little bit weathered. I was actually lucky to get this game. It's hard to find it out there and especially hard to find it at a reasonable price. So I was happy to get this. It's got a lot of information in here. And it's like 28 pages. It's got several scenarios, you know, detailed rules obviously. It's black and white, oh, but it's got a lot of good information. And it does come with two dice. Unfortunately, the copy I had didn't have the original dice, but these are, you know, GDW dice from another game. Um, my understanding is the dice that came in this game are, are green, so I was kind of hoping to get those, but these will work. And then you also get some character sheets for filling out the characters. And the idea is you can, you know, develop your own characters or you can use characters you're using in your Traveler's module. Then there's a, a weapons table. Shows the weapons and damage against different types of armor. We'll talk about that in detail. Here's all the counters. There's 120 total of them. Standard half inch by half inch counters. They're one-sided. Nothing too elaborate, but enough to display what you're doing here. As far as the unique counters, so there's several different types of you know color differentiated players so you can differentiate between basically different classes of players. For instance you could have a variety of individuals or you know troops or ruffians, various animals, police and adventurers in this mix and you kind of use the color of the different groups. Within the groups they're differentiated by you know letters to difference between the characters and each of those symbols or many of the the symbols are, are unique to kind of give you you know a little more flavor there. Um, obviously the the difference between the characters are captured in the character sheet not in the counters themselves. And these are the different classes, and then these are different, you know, targeting elements that correspond to the characters. These are casualty markers, and at first uh, they're all different, so I was wondering if these would correspond to different aspects of casualties, but I think it's for flavor. You can, you know, choose the one that you feel best captures how 
became a casualty, I guess. But it's the difference differences are, are for you know flavor. It's an explosion marker. Then these are different monster animal markers. And again, the the picture differences are for a different flavor, but the actual differences of the the monsters are captured on their and their specs they have and their individual uh, character stats. And then lastly, here's the ship plans that come with it. There's two ships. There's a 200 ton free trader Beowulf. It's got a, a main deck and then an upper deck. And then there's a 100 ton Scout Intrepid. So two unique ships. And of course you can develop other ships um, playing this as well. Each of the, the squares obviously fits the half inch by half inch counters. The scale, each square is one and a half meters by one and a half meters. And the time duration is 15 seconds per, per turn also. As far as the symbols, these are interior walls. Bulkheads are the thicker lines. Sliding doors are indicated by the lighter lines. Iris valve and hatches. These are access plates. These are vertical shafts. Lift shafts would be, you know, solid squares. And then stairs would be indicated like this. And spiral stairs are here. So there are symbols that you can use either in developing your own chips or referencing these as well. It's uh, 17 inches by 22. It's a thick, thick, you know, paper. Uh, I think the art is well done, and it really, really fits with the counters and the theme. So I'm happy with that. Then we'll get into rules. Going through the rules. First of all, design credits, game design, Mark Miller. And I said game design workshop did many innovative Games are the basis for a lot of games that followed. It does mention that instead of using counters, you can use miniatures. And actually, I'll, since it says that in the rules, I will uh, look at that option. The counters are individuals. Games performed in turns, and each character's got a certain number of action points to use. And close encounters. When one character is adjacent to an enemy character, always allows a non-moon character to perform a snap attack against a moon character, and hence that's where the name Snapchat comes from. And this, this snap attack doesn't cost any action points, even if the non-moon character is, has expended all his action points. Stacking. No score may, may contain more than one active character at any one time. Whenever a character counters six, no other character may enter that square until the character is made a casualty. Square though may contain a number of casualty counters. Casualty counters are if the character is unconscious or killed. Square may also contain any number of target or explosion counters. Facing. So the facing of the counters is important as, for instance, here's a facing. It's performed sequential turns. So distinction between combat and movement actions and any other actions the character can perform. If you're in the game, players make should compile a master list indicating the normal order of movement with a turn. Characters or equal an action point should match dice to who goes first. At the end of the turn, the first list of characters is then allowed to expend action points. Any other character with a higher action point total who has not yet had his turn may preempt that character and choose to move, move before him. Any character may be preempted by another with a higher total who has not yet moved. Preemption does not deny a character the right to expend action points. Simply allows another character to do so first within his turn. Within the turn. At any time, if an enemy character enters a square which is adjacent to the square containing a character, the character is allowed to make a snap attack in self defense. Snap attack may be made with any weapon available to the character. 
and it doesn't cost any action points. Action points allow a character to perform actions during turn. Each character has an allocation of action points equal to the sum of his endurance and dexterity characteristics. If the sum is less than six, the character receives an allocation of six action points. Action points can't be transmitted between characters. They're not accumulated between turns. The allotment is based on the calculation performed at the beginning of the game is not and is not influenced by later reductions in characteristics based on wounding. Action points are used to perform actions. It may be either movements or attacks. Several of each may be performed by a player in any order desired, subject to the number of action points available. For example, a character could move attack twice and move again, single turn. Movement actions. The following are movement actions which may be undertaken. Moving. An individual may move one square forward, directly or diagonally, at the cost of one AP. Facing of the individual does not change. Side stepping or back stepping. An individual may move to the side or to the rear, directly or diagonally, at the cost of two APs. Facing does not change. Turn. Individual may change facing by 90 degrees at the cost of 1 AP. Facing must always be toward the side of the square. Run or rush. Individual may run forward only at a cost of 2 APs per 3 squares or fraction moved. Facing does not change. The character is subject to DM of a dire, DM is dire roll modifier of minus 1 in defense while in any squares in which he runs. Portal passage, variety of doorways or doorway equivalents are available following cost supply. Helping open sliding door by expanding one AP. Load a square adjacent to the door and then waiting for three additional action points. Those APs may be expended to perform some other action but the door will not open until the wait period is passed. Open iris valve. An individual may open an iris valve in the same manner as opening a sliding door. Open hatch. An individual may open a hatch by expending 5 APs while in a square adjacent to the hatch. Passage cost. There is no additional cost in APs to pass through an open sliding door or iris valve. Crossing the line representing the hatch costs 1 AP. Individuals who are dressed in bulky clothing or equipment. Specifically, you back suits and battle dress. Must expend three APs to pass through a hatch. Closing portals. Portals may be closed by the same procedure used to open the portal. Weapon manipulation. Any character may hold one weapon ready for use at any one time. Thus, it may be necessary to draw or holster weapons in order to select the proper one. Any gun or blade weapon may be drawn at a cost of one AP. Gun may be reholstered at a cost of two APs. A blade weapon may be replaced. Miss scabbard at a cost of 6 APs. Any weapon may be simply dropped to the floor at the cost of at no cost in APs. Picking up items, loose weapons present generally the floor may be picked up by an individual. Starting, if you're stating that he's attempting to pick up an item, the player rolls one die. The result indicates the cost in APs to pick up the item. The person may then do so or may, be abort, or may abort the move. Maneuver by expending 1 AP, after which he may continue to expend APs and other actions. A person may not attempt another pickup action, however, unless he performs some other action first. Typically, this action could be expletive action, which requires 1 AP. Expletive swearing is the venting of frustration and anger when a character is not capable of using his action points efficiently. In addition to its use as quick. This pickup maneuver. Expletive may be used while waiting for sliding doors to open or as desired. Reloading guns. Weapons which must be reloaded require a relatively long time to do so. Assuming that fully charged magazines are available, an individual must expend his endurance because such action is dependent on dexterity. Thus, the higher the individual's dexterity, the smaller portion of his action points being spent on reloading. In action points, in order to in order to place the new magazine in the weapon. Some specific weapons, revolver, stub pistol, and shotgun require one full turn to reload. 
In order to maintain a sitting posture, individuals must may elect to take a full turn to reload and be treated as sneaking. Shotgun, stub pistols, revolvers, two turns are required if a sneaking posture is to be maintained. The special rules cover considerations for reloading of grenade launchers, light machine guns, auto cannon, and VRF gauss guns. Reloading, bo reloading bows, an individual may draw an arrow or a quarrel for a bow and prepare to fire the weapon at a cost of 2 APs for long bows and short bows, and a cost of 5 APs for crossbows. Carry, an individual may carry an object approximately his own size, such as a body or a large crate. By expending his total action points, minus his strength characteristics, or 6 points if the result is less than 6, the, indiv the individual and his load may move one square in any direction. Sneaking, an individual may elect to perform movement at a slow and quiet pace by expending triple normal cost for all movement actions. The person is considered evading possible attack and is allowed a die roll modifier of minus 3 when attacking at any time until the beginning of his actions on the next turn. The evasion option does not require triple cost for any combat actions, only for movement actions which are undertaken. Combat actions. Aimed attack. Individual may attack a target within range using normal procedures at a cost of 8 APs or the individual's entire AP allocation, whichever one's less. If the weapon being used is a full automatic gun or an energy weapon, the cost is 12 APs, or the person's full allocation, whichever is less. Snap attack. Individual may like to attack any target within range using normal procedures at a cost of 4 APs. If the weapon is an energy weapon, or it's full automatic, the cost is 6 APs. Snap attacks resolved with an automatic DM of minus 2. In the case of either a snap attack or aimed attack, the individual performing the attack must have the weapon being used ready. Such attacks may have guns, blades, bows, or any other available weapon. The following is a special form of combat action. It allows characters to act with their efficiency. Cover. An individual may elect to prepare an attack by selecting cover as an action. He must expend all of his action points and is treated as if he is in sneaking posture. One specific weapon is selected as ready to use. If the weapon is a gun, a target point is selected, which is both in range and in sight, and target marker is placed on point. Until the individual elects to move in the following turn, enemy character which enters a square in the covering character's line of sight, subject to aim shot. Any number of aim shots may be made under this section. In addition, any enemy character who becomes visible to the front of the covering character may instead be engaged with a snapshot. In this case, the target marker is moved to the target just engaged and changes the line of sight for the covering action. The cover mission then continues as before with a new target in line of sight. If the weapon is bow or sling, the same procedure applies, but reloading costs must be paid even though the individual has not yet elected to begin activity. Points expended are deducted from the person's allocation. Money, is, money does move. If the weapon is not a gun, bow, or sling, then the cover mission allows the person to conduct an aim attack against an enemy character who moves adjacent to him. Note that normally a snap attack is allowed in this situation, but performing the cover mission allows an aimed attack instead. Only one attack is normally allowed against a single animated character under the cover mission. The cover action must be applied to a character by placing a target marker in the character. An aim shot may be made into each square that the target moves, provided it is within range and line of sight. Line of sight, attacks and targets and ranges greater than adjacent Require a clear line of sight. Such a line of sight is a straight line traced from attack or target. The line may not pass through any obstruction, such as wall or bulkhead, or a closed door. The line may pass through one person and continue to the next person encounters, but it must end at the second person encounters. In combat, so basically you do, you do some die rolls to figure out if you're going to hit, and then you figure out the damage. To see if you're going to hit, you roll two dice, and then you apply different time modifiers. Whenever attack is made, the attacking player states the weapon being used and the target being attacked. Determines the range of the target and the armor worn by the target. 
some fish and turn the base grilled hit on the weapons chart. The number is the die roll on two dice, which must be achieved to hit the target. Basic throw to hit is subject to die roll modifiers. These include tech weapon expertise, techer strength modifications, techer dexterity modifications, defender weapon ex expertise, and modifications based on movement and snapshots. All DMs are additive. Roll two dice, modify the roll by a DM credit. If the modified result equals or exceeds the basic throw to hit, given on the weapons chart, the attack is hit the target. So again, range, type of weapons, and then the roll. They do modifiers on that. If hit is achieved, additional die rolls are required to determine the extent of wound, wounding inflicted. And over here is the number of dice to roll to figure out hits. Wounding and death, the wound column of the weapons chart indicates the number of dice thrown for wounding when a hit is achieved. Notation 4D means four dice are thrown, etc. And the result is inflicted on the target as wounds. Wound points are applied to the target's strength, dexterity, endurance on a temporary basis. Each die rolled is taken as a single wound or group of hits and must be applied to a single characteristic. The first wound received by a character be sufficient to stun or daze him or her and is handled differently. The first wound received is applied entirely to one of the three characteristics, strength, dexterity, or endurance, determined randomly. As a result, first blood may immediately incapacitate or even kill. When any one characteristic is reduced to zero by wounds, the character is reduced is rendered unconscious. When two characteristics have been reduced to zero, the character is seriously wounded and will require medical care to survive. When all three characteristics are reduced to zero, the character is dead. In any case where the application of one's, one dies wound points, puts the character at zero or below, the excess points that are lost, further wounding must be applied to other non-zero characteristics. When a character is unconscious, he or she is probably out of the game. If the game continues for 40 more turns, 10 minutes, the individual re will recover consciousness with all characteristics being placed at level halfway between the wounded and full strength level. Seriously wounded or dead persons will not recover consciousness. It's important to note that the marking off of wounds against characteristics has no effect on the person's ability as dictated by characteristics. The sum of the strength of 11, stains wounds on strength, is still treated as a strength of 11. Wounding is simply a bookkeeping system. Range, there are four types of ranges. Close, short, medium, and long. Range may be traced horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Close range is any adjacent square. Short range is any square at a distance of two squares from the character. Medium range is any square at least three squares distance, but not more than 33 squares distance. Long range is any square at least 34 squares distant. Technically, long range extends to 166 squares, but rarely, if ever, will that distance be exceeded in any interior situation. Ranges are given as separate columns on the weapons chart, abbreviated by their initial letters. Dire roll modifications. Following considerations must be taken into account when attacks are made. Attacker strength. Strength of the attacker is determined, the determining characteristic when he or she uses a blade weapon. Persons below a certain strength are subject to negative DM when using a blade weapon. Those above a certain have a positive DM. Strength chart shows the appropriate DMs for each weapon. And this is a, a chart that shows the requirements. Attacker dexterity. The dexterity of the attacker is determined characteristic when he or she uses a gun. Persons below can have a negative, above can have a high. Dexterity chart shows the appropriate DMs for each weapon. Expertise, a character's expertise in his or her weapon can provide modifiers. The attack, a character's expertise is a positive modifier, increase the chance of hitting. Expertise must be in specific weapon being used. If the character is being attacked with a blade weapon and this defending character is armed with a blade weapon, 
then the defending character is allowed a negative DM to be to be applied to the base attacker's basic throw to hit for any experience level which he has in his weapon. This use of expertise takes into account the defensive abilities of a person trained in blade combat. It may not be used with gun or bow combat. If a character is untrained in a weapon and perhaps picks up a discard weapon from the deck and attempt to use it, he or she is subject to negative DMs for the throat hit of that weapon. When attacking, the throat hit is decreased by minus 5 and when defending the blade weapon, DM is plus 3. Endurance. Individual's endurance affects the length of time he or she may fight before fatigue sits in. Attacks using blade or polearm weapons are called swings. Those in brawling are called blows. Use guns are called shots. Endurance affects swings and blows only. Character may select ordinary, weekend, or special swings and blows depending on circumstances. Ordinary swings and blows. Normal use of blades, polearms, and brawling has been described using the tables given. A character may select any ordinary swing or blow until he has made a number equal to his endurance characteristic. If he has an endurance of 10, he may take 10 ordinary swings or blows during the game period. Weakened swings and blows. Once ordinary swings and blows have been exhausted, the character may make weakened swings and blows. The weapons table indicate DM applied to the throw to hit. General weakened blows have less chance of connecting with the target. Special swings and blows. When making an attack against an unconscious opponent, special blows may be used. They do not count against the allowance or are not subject to negative DMs. Character may elect to perform a weakened blow or swing in lieu of an ordinary swing or blow unless not exhaust his allowance of ordinary attacks. Fatigue does not affect shots. Zero G combat. There may be circumstances where combat takes place in zero G environment. In such cases, Special considerations apply based on weapon movement, firing, when firing in zero-G, an individual has a chance of losing control of his movement and position in each combat round. Each time the character makes an attack, throw 10 plus on two dice to avoid losing control and becoming disoriented. Follow the following, apply the following DMs, firing a snub pistol or accelerated rifle, minus two, firing a laser, minus zero, firing a crossbow, minus three. Firing any other weapon, minus four. Striking with a blade, weapon fist, or polearm, minus six. Using a handhold, not possible with broadsword. Polearm, longbow, shortbow, plasma, fusion weapon, plus five. Wearing battle dress, plus two per level of expertise in battle dress. If dexterity, nine plus, then plus two. If dexterity is eleven plus, additional, plus two. Using a handhold, reduce dexterity for the purposes of weapon x but not for recovery by minus one. Individuals who lose control may not fire until they have reoriented themselves. For each attempt, the person expends six action points and then must throw 10 plus to regain control. DMs are applied as above, except that handholds may not be used and weapons may not be fired or attacked with. Note that any square with a wall Jason has handholds on it, but that unwalled squares do not. Movement. In a zero-g situation, a person may move by propelling himself along a wall with handholds at a rate of one square per four action points. He may also propel himself across an open area by expanding three action points in a designated direction. He then continues at a rate of one square per two action points, but cannot stop until he enters the square of the wall adjacent, and then must roll for regaining control. Firing and combat are possible while moving in this manner. And then here's weapons with strength and dexterity requirements and dice modifiers. Following special rules that detail the combat situations they should be used where they apply in order to produce more detail and realism. Weight. Characters are restricted in total weight they may carry and may suffer negative effects if carrying sufficient weight to encumber them. And a character may carry a load equal to a strength characteristic in kilograms. A character may carry up to twice his strength in kilograms, but is considered to be encumbered while doing so, and he and has his strength, dexterity, and endurance reduced by one while doing so. Shedding the extra weight returns to characteristics to normal. A character who is a member of a military force may carry up to three times his strength in kilograms, but has his dexterity, endurance, and strength characteristics reduced by two until the extra weight is shed. No person may exceed the above weight limitations. Thrown blades, daggers, and blades may be thrown at a target within five squares, thrown 18 plus to hit, 
and apply the following DMs, plus throws dexterity, plus personal expertise and weapon, and minus range starting in squares. The target may apply a defensive DM of minus 5 if he is evading. When inflicted as 2D, this action takes 4 action points. Fencing, because an individual may use his blade XP as so defensive DM. When attacked by blades, sword fighting is possible between two reasonably matched persons. Sword fights between mismatched persons end reasonably quickly. Group fights by automatic weapons. Weapons capable of full automatic fire. Marked FA on the chart. And energy guns, such as PG, MPs, and lasers, may wound individuals other than the target. Such hits may occur in persons who are in the line of fire, either in front or behind the target. In such cases, the raw throw to hit the appropriate range armor types used with a DM of minus three on the die roll. In addition, the individual is allowed in advantageous, any advantageous DMs in defense, such as for evasion. The weapon may roll against a single target more than once. An automatic weapon may roll once for two rounds fired in the burst, in addition to the roll against the target. A laser may roll against one other target if it misses the original target. An energy weapon other than a laser may roll against all possible targets. Group hits by shotgun and flush shots. Weapons firing pellets or flush shots may inflict hits on adjacent targets. In addition to allowing attack and designated target, shotguns and flush shot firing weapons may attack a person's adjacent target with a DM of minus three. Group hits by high explosive and a projectile including grenade marked as high explosive HE may wound individuals adjacent to its target square when it explodes. Rolls for hits hit. Roll for hits as if each additional individual were being attacked normally, but if it occurs, apply only half damage. Selecting full or semi fire. fire. If an individual may change the selector level of his weapon, if it's capable of full or semi from one setting to the other by expanding one action point, breaching walls, an individual may fire an energy weapon at a wall or bulk held using normal procedures, and rolling for hits inflicted on the wall. The specific wall location should be noted, and the number of hit points inflicted should be noted. When it is re has reached the appropriate total, the wall is breached, and the number and passage is possible through it. Mark the location and explosion counter for ease of reference. Hand grenades. The individual may throw hand grenades at target by expanding action points to draw or pick up the grenade, expanding two APs to arm it, and then four APs to throw it. The grenade will explode 8 action points later, or at the end of the player turn. A grenade may be thrown up to 10 squares. The, floor, the thrower may, must throw for his own dexterity or less for the grenade to hit the intended square. If the throw is not successful, the grenade will land short by the number of squares the dexterity throw was missed by. A grenade does 4d damage. The individual in the square lands in and can cause additional hits using group hits by HE rule. Weapon length effects. Weapons are given lengths in the weapon section of the booklet. These lengths may affect the use and efficacy, efficiency of the weapons themselves. Any weapon with a length of greater than 3,000 millimeters is very clumsy and cannot be used against an individual at close range. After its first such use at that range, any weapon with a length of greater than 1,500 millimeters requires care and use because the size of doorways and hatches, a person armed with such a weapon must expend one additional action point when passing through a doorway hatch or iris valve. Breaking in doors, a sliding door may be broken or open by, and opened by an individual. The procedure requires the expenditure of six action points. He must throw his strength or less of two dice. If the throw succeeds, the door has been broken open and may be passed through. Hatches and iris valves may not be broken down. Effects of gas and trank. Some pistols can fire gas or tranquilizer rounds, armor, battle dress, or being mass. Gas will only affect an individual who is not protected by a vac suit, combat armor, battle dress, or being mass. It imposes 1D hits on turn it hits and on two succeeding turns. Trank with a, is drug injected by a special cartridge and may or may not be in sufficient doses to affect an individual. The target when hit must throw his endurance or less. 
to avoid being affected. The throw fails. The target is immediately re rendered unconscious. Vacuum in vacuum suits. Interiors of starships are pressurized, and protective suits are not necessary. In any situation where the internal pressure is lost, ex explosive decompression occurs. Any individuals present will suffer 2D damage per turn until death occurs, or until the opening is sealed to prevent further loss of pressure. Individuals in back suits, battle boots, and combat armor are immune to such negative effects. Any hits actually inflicted in such armor, however, in a situation where internal pressure has been lost, will then make the individual in such armor subject to explosive decompression. Light, internal spaces within starships are normally well lit. Individuals may turn off the lights using switches placed on walls and bulkheads near doors and hatches. Such action requires one action point. When lights have been turned off, vision is impaired. A DM of minus one is applied to is applied to the basic throw to hit for each square of range in the attack. The DM is not applied if the target is in a wallet area. Characters, so again, you can basically either use the existing characters you have in Traveler, in the Traveler universe, or you can make one specifically for this. And it includes these character charts. So if you're generating them for this game, using two dice, roll six times and record the results successfully of strength, dexterity, endurance, intelligence, education, social class. The first three are essential to the combat system, the last three are only used in Traveler. Skills, roll one die for a number from one to six. This indicates the number of skills that the character has. Consult the skills table for that number of skills. A player may select either the, f the first skill table or the second skill table. They must then make all s rolls on the single table he selects. For example, if the first skill table was chosen and he gets pistol twice, then he gets a skill level of revolver of minus two. Or he might select a body pistol once and an auto pistol once, giving a level of one in each weapon. Blade allows the selection of any blade weapon. Pistol allows the selection of any pistol. Sporting allows the selection of any sporting arm. Bow allows the selection of, of any bow or sling weapon. Military allows the selection of any military long arm. Support allows the selection of any sport weapon. Energy allows the selection of any energy weapon. Back suit, battle dress, flying skills are taken as stated. When an or is stated, the player may select one of the following, one of the two categories given. Animals. Animals do not have characteristics. Instead, they have a numerical factor indicating the number of hits each takes until it is unconscious, and a further factor indicating the number of hits an unconscious animal takes before dying. Roll one die, and then roll that number on the dice to determine the hits takes until, con until conscious. Then roll one more die for the number of hits until death. Finally, roll one die to determine the type of weapon the animal uses. With the animal weapons table, each animal is allotted 15 action points. Then there's several scenarios. I'll be doing the their loose scenario. I'll just talk about these at a high, high level and then talk about this one in detail. So in this one, 110 Imperial Scout ship has entered, has entered jump space. Four crew members and six animals hijacking. The free trader Beowulf has just left en route to Europe with a full load of passengers and cargo. As preparations are made for the deep space jump, the ship's computer is fully committed to generating a flight plan. Its anti hijacking stress temporarily suspended. The crew works busily in the drive room and uh, bridge their attention is directed to their duties. No one realizes the impending situation. So it's got four crew members for one player and six passengers for the other player. Mutiny. Times have been hard and and shares to the crew have been lean for more than 17 months. Even the payments for the ship are laying behind. The pressure on the captain has been showing. Selective attention to detail and is in its treatment of crew. The strain is leading to mutiny. So it's got two characters, one animal for loyal crew, and then four crew members are mutineers. Boarding party. As Beowulf enters the system, communicators receive broadcast bring routine traffic control information. The ship must leave, must heave to for customs inspection. Captain hears something strange in the message and alerts his crew for any possibility. One hour later, a black scout ship bearing custom service markings maneuvers alongside the mates. And mates its airlock with free traders, the valve cycle, and the crew prepares for the customs team center. Their generator 
crew of four for the free trader, a team of five for the scout ship. Additional scenarios. There's, you can generate any number of scenarios. And here's ideas, rescue, breakthrough, or a berserker. Weapons, again, all the, the weapons characteristics are shown here as far as how they perform at distances and against different armor. So at a high level, you know, personal extensions, you know, like hands or claws, you know, unarmed combat or brawling. Uh, can be for animals, it's hoof stingers, thrushers, clubs. Uh, only humans can use clubs, blade weapons, you know, some are self explanatory, like daggers, talks about their weights, you know, blade, foils, cutlass. Again, we're talking about, you know, weights and sizes here. Sword, broadsword, polearms, bayonet, spears, pikes, halberds, cudgel was a basic stick uses to weapon. Bow weapons, sling, reloading a swing requires two eight action points. Short bow, reloading is two action points. Long bow, reloading, two action points. Sporting cross, crossbow, uh, putting a new bolt in place and is firing is five action points. Military crossbow, drawing back string, etc. It's uh, 12 action points. Repeating crossbow, reloading is one action point per new bolt. Note because bows require both strength and dexterity, a person using a bow must consult the dexterity and strength requirements table. Pistols, talking about the size and weight of pistols. Snub, yeah, body pistol, snub pistol, military versions of that. Automatic pistol. Talks about how many cartridges they have as well. Revolver, spring long arms, carbine, shotgun, again um, weights of the rounds as well, military long arms, assault rifle, advanced combat rifle, rifle, automatic rifle, golf rifle, accelerator or rocket rifle, submachine gun, energy weapons, there's a laser combine. Again, it talks about how many shots they have and weights and in sizes, the lengths. Laser rifle, plasma gun, man portable, PGMP-12. Plasma gun, PGM-13. Plasma gun, PGMP-14. Fusion gun, F FGMP-14. G MP-50. Note the number of designa designations on plasma and fusion guns are references to technological levels of the world's capable of manufacturing guns. Thus a PGMP-14 can be manufactured by a world at deck level 14. Techno technological levels are covered in detail in Traveler. So again, now to tie into the Traveler universe. Support weapons. Light assault gun. Talking about, again, what the magazine holds. Because a great recall of the weapon, any individual with a strength of less than 9 receives a DM of minus 2 and throw to hit firing this weapon. Light machine gun, auto cannon, fires in 10 round bursts, VRF Gauss gun, 4CM RAM grenade launchers, then armor. Then the effects of armor are also captured on on the table here with how how well they work against the different weapons. So nothing. There's no weapons. Jack is a natural synthetic bodysuit covering the torso and upper legs. Mesh jacket bodysuit of natural synthetic leather reinforced with a lining of flexible metal mesh cloth. Heavy duty leather jacket covering the upper torso and legs. Reflect. Reflective material may be tailored, which is ineffective against anything except lasers. Ablet. Ablet is a cheap alternative to reflect and also confers some protection against other forms of attack. Black jacket, military version of cloth, worn by troops on duty. 
Persons wearing flak jackets use the cloth column hit table, bend creased it through hit by M1, vac suit, pressurized suit, line individual f function of vacuum, com combat armor is a full suit of synthetic armor designed for military use. Uses a ballerous column hit table and is pressurized to all operations vacuum. His taken in vacuum are doubled. Battle dress for vac suit skill is required for these combat armor. Battle dress, the ultimate in battle armor. Military battle dress in a complete vacuum suit style array of metal synthetic and electronic armor. In addition to allowing use of the PGMPs, battle dress provides vacuum protection and doubles personal strength in the individual, for the individual wearing it. His taken in vacuum are doubled. Battle dress skill is required for the use of battle dress. And then ship plans. So the two sh ships are pre presented. It talks about you know the scales, um, symbols, interior walls. A partition can be broken through after it sustains 100 hit, hit points from an energy weapon or explosive bulkheads. A bulkhead can be holed after it takes 100 hit points from an energy weapon or explosive. After it takes a thousand hit points, a hole large enough for a person to pass through is produced. Sliding door. Door is opened by pressing the stud to sink one extra point and then waiting for three extra points. It's closed in the same manner. If the ship's power is not on, the door will not operate, but can be forced and the individual, individual must send six action points to throw a strength or less to break it in. Hatch, a hinged metal door set to bulkhead, which is airtight. Must be operated by hand, will, sense, face. Individual expends five action points to open or close it. There's no provision for locking it, but it may be blocked in closed position by jamming an object into the hand wheel. Mover takes six action points. Then can only be opened by an individual who moves the jamming object. A hatch may be a doorway in a bulkhead. Or maybe set flush in deck. Iris valve functioning. Check the aperture of a camera. A series of metal planes, plates for blocking a doorway. They're tight and closed. For valves are difficult to force open. For an individual attempting to force open a closed valve, throw 9 plus for the attempt. DM plus 1 if strength is 10 plus, 2 plus. Plus two if dexterity is ten plus three minus three if the individual is in a vac suit. Action requires six action points. Gunfire explosive will only make the valve close tighter. Any strong metal object will prevent the full closure of the open valve placed in the opening. The valve can then be forced open with ease. One AP. Harris valves will function automatically to seal off an area if pressure drops and the ship's power is on. Vertical shaft with, with hatch. Excess being decks and capitalized by vertical shaft closed by hatch. Hatch requires expenditure of 5 APs to open and close it. Green on shaft, the next deck requires 3 APs. Climbing through shaft is 5 APs because hatch is open. Top shaft, climbing up shaft is required before the hatch can be opened. Vertical shaft with iris valve. Excess between decks may be accomplished by vertical shaft closed by an iris valve. The valve operates the usual 1 AP to press the stud. Wait 3 APs. Climbing it requires 5 APs. Descending requires 3. Valves at the top shaft and the 3 AP weight can be partially used to climb the shaft, lift shaft, elevator, platform, allowing movement between decks, extend the walls open the shaft, where the individual steps in and selects the deck to go to. Their next turn is spent the elevator, moves up or down one deck. Upon arrival, players turn via the door open, or any lift shaft measures one half by one half meters. Can be entered from any direction not blocked by a wall, it's capacity of one person. The shafts pass through bulkheads and seal the bulkhead airtight after passing through. Stairs, stairways provide transition one to the other. Each square of stairs moved up requires an expenditure of two APs. When moving down, requires one AP. Running costs two APs, three, three squares down, and three APs, three squares up. Spiral stairs, spiral staircases, trees at ordinary stairways. Access plates, concealed maintenance, or access plates are intended for use by authorized personnel. There are instead walls and bulkheads operating. Opening a panel requires the possession of a key and the expenditure of one full turn. Passing through a panel opening requires the expenditure of six APs. Handholds, all walls assume 
All others are assumed to have sufficient handholds or grasping surfaces to allow zero-g movements. Floors and ceilings, however, do not. Interior movement. Gravity. The starship is gripped with grav plates and all decks. They prefer a constant artificial gravity field. Field is constantly on subject only to deliberate cancellation by someone on the bridge or to, f or to failure of the ship's power supply. Power. The ship's power supply provides extra for heat, light, and other services in the ship. As long as the power supply is operational, life support ventilation recycling continues on a constant basis. Light. Normally all rooms and components of the starship are lit. Light may be extinguished by switch near any doorway. Pressure. All areas of the starship are pressurized and contain breathable atmosphere. Outside the ship is pure vacuum. If a path of open doorways and hold, bulkheads can be traced from location to the outside. Then all locations along that pathway are also in vacuum. Again, the ship plan symbols. Tier wall, bulkhead, sliding door, hatch, iris valve, access plate, vertical shaft with hatch, vertical shaft with iris valve, lift shaft, stairs, and spiral stairs. Setup that I'm doing this scenario, they're loose. The situation is, using the deck plan for the scout ship Intrepid, place two crew members on the bridge, one in the drive room, one in the state room, four, place two animals in the cargo bay, two in the common area, and two in the air raft berth. All interior doors are open, the airlock doors are closed, Cl crew members are unarmed. With any weapons they may possess securely placed in the ship's locker. Crew members are all in shipboard clothing without armor. Each animal is restricted to the square in which it is originally placed, caged, until it can escape. Each roll 7 plus for the animal, after which it can move free freely and intelligently. Crew member may not move, expend any action points until after an escaped animal enters his line of sight. Assume an all direction line of sight for each crew member until an escaped animal is sighted. The first time an escaped animal is detected, an alarm is raised immediately, and play begins from that point. All iris valves may be closed from the bridge. All doors, other doors are operable only from their location. Animals are incapable of operating any doors. Victory. A player wins when he has completely destroyed all animals or crew members belonging to the other player. Options. The following options may be used to provide variety after this scenario has been played several times. One, allow multiple players, each manipulating one or more characters or animals. This option is excellent for team play. Two, use the Free Trader Beowulf deck plan instead of the scout ship. Animals should be placed in the cargo bay initially. A. Generate six passengers who then occupy passenger deck staterooms at the beginning of the scenario. The passengers must be protected from the animals. Passengers store their weapons in the ship's locker with all other weapons. 2B. Generate six low passage passengers in frozen cold sleep and place them in the low passage section. Each may be revived by a crew member but dies during the process and roll five or less. 3. Low armor other than nothing for both animals and crew members. One of each type of armor, nothing, jack mesh, clothing, cloth, a blade, reflect, and battle dress is available to animals. One of each type except battle dress is available to the crew members. Additional individuals or animals which are added use nothing as their armor type. This scenario calls for generating four, four crew and then six animals. So for the crew, I just, uh, since they go by A through D, I just had each name begin with a, the proper letter, Alpha, Beta, Cephas, Damocles, etc. For their abilities, so I did all six, Strength, Dexterity, Endurance, Intelligence, Education, Social, but for this we just focus on Strength, Dexterity, and Endurance. Alpha has Strength of 10, Dexterity 7, Endurance 10. Beta 4 has Strength 8, Dex 35, Endurance 4. Cephas has Strength 5, Dex 38, Endurance 5. Damocles is probably one of the more robust ones. Strength of 8, Dex 30, 10, Endurance 12. As far as skills, Alpha Primus has Blade, Bow, Pistol, and Brawl. Beta has Body Pistol, Energy Weapon, Auto Pistol. Cephas has military long arm, supporting weapon, energy weapon, and Damocles has brawl and blade and bow. And then for the crew, 
I also stated which, so they start up with all their weapons in the locker, and Beta 4 will have a body pistol in the locker, and uh, Cephas, a laser carbine, Alpha Primus, automatic pistol and blade, and Damocles, a short bow. I'm also doing the option where you let them have different types of armor. They can each have one of the different types of armor except for the, the battle suit. Beta will have a will have jack armor, Cephas mesh, Alpha Primus cloth, and Damocles a, a blade. So that's the crew. Then for the animals, the uh, to do that you roll the dice to figure out how many dice rolls to make for their unconscious points. And and then for you roll two for instance, then you roll the dice twice to get the number of it to unconscious. Animal A has sixteen points to unconscious, additional one to kill, so seventeen total. Weapons is claws. B is twelve unconscious, five more to kill, weapon claws. C, 8 to unconscious, 3 more to kill, and then weapon threshers. D, 12 to unconscious, 6 more to kill, so 12 of 18. Weapon horns, E, 5 to unconscious, 2 more to kill, and then weapon hooves. F is 3 to unconscious, 6 more to kill, so 12 of 9 weapon hooves. And then I'm also doing the option where they can have one of each type. A will have nothing, B will have jack, C will have a blade, D reflect, E battle dress, F mesh. And as far as the order, it's the dexterity plus the endurance. So the animals have a an action point of 15. Beta has will have a total of 9, Cephas 13. Alpha is 17, then Damocles actually is 22. So. The general order will be lowest action points the highest, but higher can go before the other ones if they want. To set up then, I had the option, in the rules it says you can use miniatures. These are the counters for monsters. I just used some generic, cheap miniatures. I got them from Game Crafter. And to designate which ones, I'll just put them on the corresponding letter target and that way I'll know which one is monster A, B, etc. So these are the monsters in their defined locations these three groups and then the characters, these are these orange kind of generic characters to indicate which is which I'll just put them on their their lettered counter and then the facing Facing from monsters is, you know, this, when they're facing the direction they're kind of walking to, obviously. And the facing for the crew will be, you know, where their face is facing, obviously. So that's set up. We'll get into play. So on a roll of seven or better, the animals escape. And it says in rules that when a animal escapes and is in line of sight of the crew, then the crew can take action and they sound the alarm. I'm going to assume that once they sound the alarm, then all the other all the other uh, crew can take actions as well. I think that's reasonable, uh, but if not, we'll call it a host roll, if that's not the intent. Um, thinking that the alarm, they'll say, okay, animals have escaped, let's do something about it. So that's what I'll do. And all the, initially all the, the doors are open. And I, I wasn't quite sure to do, what to do this cargo door since it doesn't really match with what it says on the descriptor of the different items. It looks like this is a bulkhead and I assume that this maybe opens up like a garage door or something. So I'm going to assume that... Uh, this can open like any other door and that this is initially open. Again, another assumption, but if it doesn't match up, then we'll call it a house roll. So first of all, we'll see if A escapes his cage. He does. And then he can move. 
He's got 15 action points. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, he's facing him. And the, uh, and now the alert is sounded and everybody can move. Since the animals are at 15, I'm assuming that we've already gone past where Beta or Cephas would act. So now it's just Alpha and Damocles in this turn. And he moved in range of. Cephas, so Cephas gets to do a snapshot, and he doesn't currently have any weapons because all the weapons start in the the locker. So he just has his hands. And fortunately, his strength is only five. And if then referring to this information for hands. If he doesn't have a level of six, he's a modifier of minus two. So he'll attack and it's close range. Animal A has no armor. So he would need a a five or better. But we'll have to modify the die roll. 9 minus 2, 7, so he does hit him. And then 4 damage. Four hands, it's one dice. He does 5 damage. Animal A has 16 telcos unconscious, so we'll knock that down to 11. So damage was done there. And then A can attack. And his he his weapon is claws. So he's at close range. Cephas has mesh armor. So claws against mesh. Seven. He needs a seven or better. He doesn't hit him. And then he's going to retreat a bit. He's going to sidestep a little bit. Okay, and then we'll see if B becomes alert or escapes. He escapes as well. Similarly. One, two, three, four, five. Situation, snap attack again. And the armor that B has is Jack armor. So again, he gets a minus two modifier. Going against Jack armor, he would need a seven to re reduce the dice. And he misses. And then he goes, he's going with claws also. That's his weapon. Claws against Jack armor. He needs a, a seven. He gets a seven. As far as damage, we'll see if he affects either his strength, dexterity, or endurance. And so it's one, two is strength, three, four, we'll say his dexterity, five, six, endurance. Two, he's going against his strength. And then a claw does one dice of damage. Six. That's significant because he only Cephas only has five points in strength and he's now down to zero there. Which means that he's unconscious. So it's pretty significant. And now since the others have been activated, 
before proceeding to the other monsters, the uh, Alpha Primus and Damocles have more have more than 15 action points, so they have the option of going before, and they're going to do that before the other one goes. Alpha Primus is here, and he's going to go get a weapon. So he's going to go kind of sidestep backwards. One, two. Normally he'd have to wait three before it opens, but it's already open. So. Four, four, five. Since he, so one, two goes one, two, three, four, and then to pick up a weapon. I'm assuming they're loose in there, and he'll roll the dice to see how much it takes. It takes five more to pick it up, so he can pick it up, and he's picking up. A automatic pistol. So he's at nine now. And he'll turn ten, eleven, twelve, and then he needs to, and then he'll take one action point to draw his weapon, and then he'll move one out so he's not blocking the door. Then Damocles, he's actually, he's fairly strong, so he's actually going to engage them in combat. He's going to go one, two, three, again the doors open, four, five, six, well, two points, two points, one. He's going to assume these ones are still in their cages. And this one can take a, a snapshot at him. And again, that's A. And his weapon is Claws. Damocles has a Blat armor. Claws against a Blat armor. Ten. Misses. And Damocles will go. He has a skill of Brawl. So he'll get a plus one. Animal A has no armor. As far as the skill chart with hands, he has a strength of he has a strength of eight. So he's not at the advantageous level, but he gets a, a plus one for having the brawl ability. And he'll need a five or better. He hits him. Does two points of damage. And now he's down two more points. I guess we can call those effectively hit points. Then the two other monsters, and actually he's gonna, he's gonna go away a little bit here. And then the monsters will go, we'll see if they come aware and escape. No? Yes? He's gonna kind of go by the other ones and kind of get away from this mess a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's just going to stay there kind of defensively. See if E and F are aware. Nope, E isn't F. F is aware. He escapes. He's also going to kind of stay up. They're going to try to group in here a little bit. That's that turn. So the iris valves can be controlled from the bridge and you see some value to closing them. That way you can isolate these animals here and kind of keep all those guys in there. So that's what they're going to do. 
beta can go first and it's not clear what action points usually you need three action points to close an iris valve and then you want to go through it so I'm assuming he needs three to close the valves so I'll assume that he's got nine action points so he'll close those and I'll indicate them being closed by a kind of inverted marker here to in indicate these airlocks or these iris valves are closed. So they kind of sort of have them contained again, sort of. And then he still has got six left, so he wants to go and see if he can get a weapon. You go three, that's so three. Four, five, six, seven, and then he'll roll to see how many action points it takes to lift it up. No, it takes too many to lift it up, so he'll just stay there till next turn. Cephas is still unconscious, so he won't be doing much this turn. Alpha can go before the monsters, and he's going to do that. He's going to go one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven to open the iris, this iris valve. He can open it locally. Eight. And then he still has 17 left. So he's going to fire. He's got a automatic pistol. He'll be firing at... Animal A. So Animal A has a has no armor. The range is two, so it's short range. Automatic pistol to hit no armor at short range is five, and then he has proficiency, so he gets a plus one on that. So he gets seven total which means he hits. And then for damage, does three, three damage. Let's see, so he does five, seven, eleven. A had, A needed nine to go unconscious and ten to get killed, so he's, he's dead. And it can indicate it's dead, I'll flip over a casualty marker and indicate that. It's removed from play. So that's a snapshot from GDW from 1979. Obviously a very innov innovative game in the Traveler universe to allow close combat on ships. It's a good foundation for a lot of work that I would follow and it's uh, it's done well in that it's pretty straightforward. Um, the actions and movements are you know stated by points and then also your your hit and then your damage is um, easily captures modifiers in there so it's very well done and um, it's a good module for the traveler, but it also is a good standalone. Uh, since it's foundational and enjoyable, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Thanks a lot.